Welcome Raiders to another Raid Shadow Legends video and in this one I wanted to talk about my thoughts on the new Epic Fragment Summon, right? I was actually pulling my shards and I was talking about there's a new 10x. Find out that my voice was uh, distorted in the video and I wasn't going to make you guys watch that. It was kind of funny at parts and then some parts it was just no, it wasn't that good. So. Um, we're just going to talk about the 10x right here for a lily or a lil um, for the voids if you're going to pull. But this is a 10x, you're probably not going to pull shards. Um, Elva Autumnborn, this is going to be one of the new Sylvan Watchers. The next one is going to be Greed Warden Ruark, another Sylvan Watcher. If you think about it, pretty much she's like um, a, like a cleansing duchess, or that's what it kind of reminds me. Like you know, you get a little bit of this without the perfect veils you get to revive only one person but it's on a three turn and you do get increased attack increased defense no perfect you get this like you see what i'm saying like it's a it's a mix of perfect veils and some heals i guess it's kind of like rector drath maybe it's more like rector drath but now she has like buffs and cleanses if you think about it it's kind of like that actually now that i think about it yeah um then it's over here green warner and Wurok. you got transfer all debuffs that's pretty cool a defensive champion that puts decre decreased attack, continuous, ooh, steals all continuous heals. This effect cannot be resisted. But what about this? Transferring, you need accuracy for that. <laughs> so you gotta build accuracy for one skill. Well, that and the decreased attack, yeah. Then he also has the taunt on a four turn. Oh, you're a legendary and you're a 134 champ? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Can't even be a 133? Sheesh. At least he has a passive whenever he, an ally loses 10% or more HP. You get a, you know, you get a shoot. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Then we got King Gal uh, Galcobar, which I think is really, really cool. Um, you, you got the A1 with shields, which is typical on HP or support champs. He's an attack champion? Well, he's, more least, he's mainly support. But attacks removes all buffs, plus poisons, block buffs, and then cleanser. So, so yeah, he can turn out to be a damage dealer because he's doing poisons, shielding, and cleansing. And shielding, cleansing, shielding, and healing. Like he can do so many different things, like all in his kit. You know, it's pretty, pretty nice. And see, like they've each one poison on that enemy. It's like, wow, wow. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, he's like mini wither, and then mini like dark hail, like <laughs> proking poisons. Like, jeez, that's that pretty interesting. Then we got the epic Cormac, the high peak. Mm, decrease speed, decrease defense on a one on single targets, both of them. On this champion, grants an extra turn. Okay, that's that's so greedy. I mean, it's gonna be helpful for faction wars, but Mistrider, Diethy, people, uh, Daethy, is it Diethy or Daethy? People have been talking about him, saying he's really, really good. Lots of extra turns. It's pretty good. So. I'm curious. I I tried to pull 22 ancient shards, didn't get nothing. I actually got a, what was it? I got a Lady of Tessa. Yeah, I got a Lady of Tessa, and I got a freaking Dark Bear from Skinwalkers. The yeah, you guys know the two the two bears. Yeah, two bears. I got the dark one. We got uh, each critical hit has an 80% chance of steal. Oh yeah, this is Ruella. Ruella's really good. People were showing her off in Fire Knight and some other areas. Um. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I definitely want to try her out. I definitely want to try her out. See how good she is. All right, but that's not the point of this video. We want to talk about this because a lot of people have been talking about this champion and if it's even worth to go for the new fragment. There you go. New fragment summon. Is Host Coral even worth our time? Right. Um. So let's see. So the first. The A1 is going to be Hermit Cudgel. Uh, attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of placing a stun debuff. That can be bookable to 40% chance. Also can with the Fearsome Present Mastery in the defensive um, tier 6 mastery, you can actually increase that by 5% on artifact sets and skills. So that would be 45% right there. Sustained Beating attacks on enemies. Um, has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. That is bookable to 25, so that's 75 plus the fearsome would be 80% chance for one turn. AoE 
On a three turn cooldown, which is really, really good for an epic, actually, decreases the turn meter of, of enemies under stun debuffs by 15%. Okay, so I'm seeing some synergy here with Armina. If you combine Armina and Huskerul, that is pretty crazy. Um, the A3 is unfazed, removes all stun debuffs from all allies and places a 60% increased defense buff and a 25% increased resistance buff on all allies for two turns. This is a six turn cooldown that is bookable down to a four. Okay, so he's not a one, three, three. That makes me sad, very sad, but he is a one, three, four with a passive. Finish the foe. Immune to deep stun debuffs. Okay, just like kind of Bergam car is immune to provoke. Increase the damage inflicted by allies by 15% when attacking enemies under stun debuffs. That sounds pretty good for wave content. Um, and it sounds pretty interesting for arena. Other than that, you can't really use that against bosses. I wish instead of just like screwing off when you get to the boss, you're like, what do I do? I don't get no passive. Give us something, even if it's a baby. Like something baby. Like, okay, when you when when an ally hits a boss that cannot like you know, and is and is not stunned, right? Then this happens, like ten percent turn meter boost, or all allies get a twenty five percent increase attack. You know, it, it's a defense champion, so of course you're not going to increase defense again. So what else would you do? Probably increase speed or decrease speed the enemy. That would be pretty cool. Um, and then the aura is increase ally defense by faction crips by thirty six thirty percent. That's a lot of defense in in, in faction crips, but that's so specific and most people have already by now are almost done or already done with faction wars and let's just say you're not barbarians is not one of the hardest ones to do right if you have still the drakes there's armina like i just spoke about there people had rorik if you if you really needed to do it you could then you could have used wormbane right um there's also a lot of good other good ones as well like in terms of barbarians, barbarians had Operdin clan father, Operdin, right? Um, that you could have gone for and easily just beat that. <laughs> there's like, there's so many good champions actually, uh, in that faction. Decent, you know, like, especially in the epics too, like Sky Touch Shaman and some other stuff. Sandlash, Survivor. What do I think of Hoskarl? Is he going to be worthy enough of our time? Well, one, he's a fragment summon, right? So you gotta get fragments and not fuse the champion. Uh, he's a defensive champion, so he's not attack, right? Because if we look at our Mina, right? I can zoom out of here. Get me out of here. <laughs> uh oh. I actually made it way too big. I got to. <laughs> uh, that, that's not. That, we're not gonna continue that. <laughs> but if we look at Armina, right? She is an attack champion. With 1354 eight, and 1900 HP. She does have a lot of HP for a stunning champion. She's got stun in the A1. She's got stun in and she has decreased defense, but not AoE stun. Her AoE stun is conditional, right, to this. He actually just does it. And people have shown off a little bit of Armina. So if people have already done Armina, people are definitely going to use him in Arena to show him off. But what I also thought is, and she also gets a lot of turn meter when people are receive a stun, so that's pretty nuts. I think it's going to be a very strong combo putting them together. It can be really annoying and toxic. Is it going to be end game level? No, it's not. But it, people are going to still use it. I think it's going to be very interesting as Hydra. Now we know there's going to be two more Hydra heads. Uh, there's going to be the the phase three hydra head and then phase five is going to have a hydra head as well there's going to be the thunder head and the other head right so i'm i'm suspecting that the thunder head is going to um stun all your allies it might be unblockable and unresistible so it's, it might be good to have a champion who's immune to stun debuffs who can then cleanse other champions of stun debuffs that's the only thing i can think other than yes, yes, kid gives him increased defense and increased resistance, which could help you out if you need a little bit more resistance in hard doom tower or something like that, and you really need to boost up your champions because you're using a resistance lead and you still can't get that just little bit. 
25 it's not a 50 percent, but hey 25 percent is better than nothing right especially because art once you max out the great hall that's all you got right so so my thoughts on him is i'm actually gonna go for him honestly um because he's a he's an epic champion he's gonna be easy to get unless player makes it super hard to get and two you can combo him with different champions that's the whole point of this game is to come up with unique comps yeah we can all just try to go for power creep and pick one champion um but if that were the case then we just all pull void shards and spend thousands of dollars and then that's it and just pick the most broken champs anyways right so that's that's why i'm going for him am i going to use him a lot no i'm only going to try him out from like one or two different comps that's it then he's probably going to sit in the vault but for most players especially mid game and late game i would still use him because he's going to be very powerful in hard doom tower i mean literally i could probably create let me show you a team a hypothetical team if i were trying to do hard doom tower and I didn't have a full auto team, which I know a lot of you probably don't. What team would I come up with? Well, let me show you one a good example. Most people have Euros. If you're doing hard Doom Tower Secret Rooms, you're probably on the way of getting this champion, or you already have this champion, right? A lot of people have this champion as well, Renegade, right? So I would come up with some unique uh, comp like this, which would be pretty crazy in my opinion. Surprised no one has shown this. Real quick, I'll go through. I think Armino's not 60 yet, unfortunately. I know I gotta get. Oh, probably didn't click this. Oh, that's probably why. So let's pretend. Let's pretend that this champion. Okay, don't don't. <laughs> let's pretend that this champion is the new the new ep, the new epic husk girl, right? And there's a lot of different. You know, champions that can put poisons. You could go Tomb Lord. If you don't have any legendary poisoners, you can go Tauros. Uh, you probably want to put um, him in the lead instead to get the resistance. If you need any other poisoners, you know, got Chogger. Uh, you can put someone in a toxic set. You could bring a Battle Kazar. Battle Kazar is not going to work because it's only two. You need to have to have three minimal. You could bring a Cavalax instead if you need to increase speed. Um, if you still need more poisoners. Uh, Gerda, I, Gerda, I think she only puts two. Yeah, she only puts two, and it doesn't hit anybody, so you can't add a toxic set to her, unfortunately. Um, unless you want to put a toxic set on Hoss Girl, which I don't know if you should, I don't think you should do that. Um, there's no other, you got, you got other twos. Most people have twos. So you have to have three. The reason why you have to have three, all these champions will have three turn abilities, right? You'll have the three turn here. You'll have the three turn here. Uh, Fed it eruption. You'll have the three turn the stuns. And you want to have a three turn poisoner. So I guess Tomb Lord would probably be the best. And you could use the increased accuracy if you're having trouble. But a lot of people don't have a lot of Tomb Lord. So I'm trying to figure out another champion who can put three poisons. Most people are going to put two. Even, um, even Yurgrim only puts two. That's why that's why I always go with Tauros. Unfortunately, he's not a three turn champ, right? Um, so you could use this. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to build them a little bit faster. But the whole point of this is that you stun the enemies, you stun the enemies, you stun the enemies, you reset, and then you stun the enemies, and they all die to your poisons. You don't even have to touch them. You don't build no stats, nothing. So this is a comp that you could do that could be full auto. You know, now you, you of course you would need to have him fully booked so you could get the hundred percent stun. Because he's a void champion, he's gonna basically stun them, decrease speed them. You know, they're just gonna get controlled. And remember, when they get controlled, Armina will also she can decrease turn meter and then stun them as well. She gets turn meter boost. She gets a decrease defense, which is not really gonna we're not gonna need <laughs> because they're gonna die to the poison. And she steals turn meter, so you can definitely see some craziness happening there. We're gonna get increased defense. We're gonna get stuns. We're gonna get like he's immune to stun, so someone uses a stun. You just pretty much gotta keep and they're all deep like defense. You could build you could build her high HP defense. The only champion you have to worry about dying is the Tauros. But uh or or the renegade, but you could build her in immortal so she doesn't die to this skill eventually, right? But in the rounds, your champions will heal themselves anyways. So that's something I'm gonna try out in the future. It's a comp, and that's pretty much why I'm going for hospital. Should I go should most people go for him? Most people are probably not. I would say like sixty percent of the community is probably not gonna go. And then the other 40% probably is like 10% undecided, and then 30% they might go for it. So that's how I feel. Because it's an epic champion. It's easy to go for. He's easy to book to. I don't know if you noticed, but he's only 
nine books, chat. I mean, he's only nine books, like legit. He's only nine. From what I counted, that's not that bad. That's not that bad for epic books. So, anyways, thank you, readers. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.